Yes guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Hope you guys are all having a great day and looking forward to uh, the Arsenal versus Newcastle match later on today down at the Emirates Stadium. 7.45 kickoff if you are going to the game. Big up to you. Hopefully we can take home a result and it will be on TV as well, 7.45. So I will be finding myself a place to watch it. Uh, if you recognise where I am, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I've just parked my car around the corner at the garage. Thought I'd come into a local pub, uh, have a drink and talk about some football. I say a drink, it's the middle of the day. I'm on the coke, so I'll save the beers for later uh, when I head out for the match. But we're going to talk a little bit about the Arsenal versus Newcastle game and some of these transfer links coming out in the last 24 hours. Lots of reports that Newcastle may well have placed their first bid of this January window on a centre midfielder, defensive centre midfielder, Alan Varela. Uh, quite an exciting young player from over in the Argentinian league, plays for Boca Juniors. Now the bid is understood to be around 15 to 18 million. Quite a lot of reports on this one coming out this morning. Little bit of a whisper last night, but a lot more this morning and it's the type of player I can see Newcastle going for. He is understood to potentially have a release clause for around 18 million. He's a young lad. It's a position we want to fill. It sounds like it makes a bit of sense. Uh, so we'll come on to Varela in a moment. I'm going to talk a little bit about a few other players that Newcastle have been linked with in the last 48 hours or so. One of which is Ronaldo. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know what's going on with this one I've I've not really got a clue to be honest it, it does it sound real I'm still not sure uh, lots of reports on this one that obviously Cristiano Ronaldo has gone and signed over um to a Saudi Arabian team is making half a million pounds a day he's, he's making like 200 million a year lots and lots of money for him over there obviously because Newcastle are part owned by the PIF, who obviously are Saudi Arabia. There is now links supposedly that if Newcastle reach top four this season, that it's in Ronaldo's contract, that if he wants to, he can move on loan to Newcastle for the start of next season. So basically he can go and play for a Champions League team. Now, um, some of the reports that came out yesterday, one of the largest leading Spanish reporters has actually come back out and said that, it's, that it wasn't them and they, and they weren't reporting that. So reports saying that it is, then reports saying that it isn't. Long story short, I don't know if I'd want Ronaldo, to be honest. I mean, he had a, a very good career. He scored a lot of goals, trying to be, you know, down the line as possible. Could he come in? teach something to the youngsters bring a bit of strike power you know off the bench you know he's got a great scoring record in the Champions League should Newcastle get there I mean that's the first hurdle and even if we got there you'd imagine Eddie Howe would, would say no I, I just can't I can't as much as it could be in his contract and as much as I'm sure the owners would probably like to see it and look in terms of um, bringing money into the club help with commercial it will help with branding you know if Newcastle got him on loan therefore didn't have to pay his wages we're bring it, basically bringing him in for free but think of all of the shirt sales think of all that stuff so from a business point of view I can see it from an experienced player to score goals I can see it but going back to Eddie Howe's and look if, if he can have a conversation with Eddie Howe Eddie Howe goes look you're not the main character here. You're gonna come in, you're gonna help out. It's not the Ronaldo show, it's the Eddie Howe show. Maybe, I just can't see it. I, I just can't see it. Uh, so whether that happens, it remains to be seen. Whether it's true or not, it remains to be seen. We will wait and see. Uh, something that does sound a lot more real, to be honest, is the following of the young right back, uh, Ivan Fresneda. He's the young lad who plays for Real via De Lid. He is just 18 years old uh, and it's reported that Newcastle scouts have been out there to take a look at him. Now look, right back, Kieran Trippier, uh, it's not the position that springs to my head and goes, we need some cover, but 
you think of young players like Grant Kowal coming in. This window, as much as I would love to see that World Cup class player, <laughs> it's also about bringing in players who are going to help and not just fill the bench, but younger players who can grow up, who can, you know, we're better off bringing somebody in now who can learn behind Trippier than wait, you know, a year, two years, maybe even three for Trippier to go and then go, oh, hang on, should we buy a new right back now? To get someone in like him at hopefully a reasonable price who can learn behind Trippier, learn the ropes and hopefully become the next Trippier is a great move. And you, you think, you know, Crafty, probably not going to see him this season. Mankio doesn't look like he's he's in favour. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we could maybe even see Mankio go. Um, in fairness, uh, for Fresneda, it's thought that if we do get him, we may well send him straight back out on loan again. Uh, and it's understood his contract has still got a few years left on it until 2025. But as a youngster, maybe there's a deal to be done. Uh, the problem is, is that um, he's, a, he's meant to be a wonder kid. <laughs> I've seen a little bit of him. Uh, he's also being followed by Madrid, Dortmund, Juventus, Newcastle. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I think it sounds good looking at those younger player options. And one of them, as I mentioned at the start of this video, is around the 21-year-old Alan Varela. Uh, an Argentinian player at Boca Juniors. Plays defensive mid, centre midfield. As we like to say, that number six role uh, that we had hoped John Joe Shelby would have come in and filled for the second half of this season. But that is no longer going to be the case. Um, and look, Bruno has done a great job in that role. You could possibly say is the best player in that position that we have at the club. I would still like to see Bruno have the option to go forward. Uh, and, and look, if we do go down the lines of you know, a Madison or a more attacking player... Bruno can continue what he's doing, but at the same time, it's nice to have the option. I feel like at the moment, we can't really move Bruno anywhere else but that sitting place because he's the only one who can do it. Uh, he's the only one who can really take the ball in, slow the game down, control the game. And look, this guy's only a young lad. He's only 21 years old. So to think he'll come in and totally steal the show immediately, is probably a little bit over the top. But I think, as I mentioned, young guy, bring him in. Obviously unproven in the Premier League, uh, but get him in behind Bruno and I'm sure you'll teach him what to do. The thing I've spoken about quite a lot in this January window is availability. Uh, as I've mentioned, the Leicester player everyone wants to see is Madison, but Tillemans, his contract ends in the summer, which means that Leicester really need to sell him this January to get some money back. Uh, and that's the availability side of things. I think younger players will be more available. And Varela, that I've mentioned already, he is understood to have a release clause on around 18, 20 million. So it sounds like we've maybe gone in with something a little bit lower to test the water and hear what they have to say. Who's to say that we go, don't go in now with a couple of million extra? Boom, we've brought the player in for the for a reasonable price. As I say, I have done my bits of research on this guy. He is unproven over here, but there is a pretty good record for, you know, obviously South American players coming over and doing a good job in the Premier League. And as I've said, he's intelligent, he's quick, he's pacey, he can tackle, and he plays the position that we need somebody to come in and fill. Let me know your thoughts on Varela. Is he a player that you have heard of? Is he someone you would like to see come in and sign for Newcastle? As I mentioned, I just think it's a good plan to go out and look at some of these younger players. And I think with a reasonable price tag on his belt. And as I've mentioned, um, get them in, get them to play behind players to learn. It's almost like, it's like a Dan Ashworth thing, I think. It's bring players in and build them up with the squad. You know, a lot of teams will go out and just spend a big chunk, spend a big chunk. I think if anything, he's trying to build this next group of players to come up, come through. Garankwal, uh, uh, Fresneda, um, Varela, you know, get these guys in at a young age to learn with the team. It's good. It's clever. It'll save us a lot of money in the long run. And as I've said, for what appears to be quite a reasonable price for what people are calling, you know, a wonder kid over there. And is obviously linked with a number of other teams as well. 
hopefully Newcastle can be the ones to get in there. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Varela and the other guys that I've mentioned there. Is there anyone this window you would love to see come in? What do you kind of make of this January window and what do you think we can do? Because I've seen a lot of people say that they don't actually think we'll bring anybody in this window. I think we definitely will do some business. We've actually seen the scouts out watching Ivan Fresneda. Proves that we are in the market. It proves we're out there trying to bring these players in. Uh, will we have anyone in time for the Arsenal game tonight? No, I don't think so. But I'm hopeful we can go and get a result there. Now, look, we don't have a great record at the Emirates. Arsenal are playing very, very well at the moment. Arsenal are scoring a lot of goals at the moment. Uh, let me know your predictions down below for the game later on tonight. Even without Jesus, um, Odegaard, Martinelli, Saka, uh, Enketia. They've got people who score. And in the last two games, they beat Brighton 4-2. They beat West Ham 3-1 on Boxing Day. They're scoring goals, but they're also leaking a few goals as well. I think it will be important to try and get Callum Wilson on the pitch. Um, you know, Chris Wood puts it out there. And we did see Wilson come on at the end of the last game, so I'm hopeful we will see him. It's understood that Isak is back in full training now, which is very important for us the second half of this season. But I don't think he'll be there tonight. I think it'll be the Sheffield Wednesday game. I think it could be the game after that. We'll have to wait and see. Um, what we've got going for us is we don't concede. As much as Arsenal score a lot of goals, we're very good defensively. And I think that will be the battle tonight. If we can get one, maybe even two, and defend well, I think that's our best chance. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the game tonight. Get your predictions in down below. Let me know your thoughts on the transfers and whether this bid could well be one we see go through. Uh, and we will look forward to what appears to be a very exciting January window. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on the game tonight. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're still watching now and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. There will be tons of videos throughout this January with a lot to talk about, lots of games, hopefully lots of transfers as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.